episode of Coding with Kate, we are going to be talking about sequela or sequela, however you want to pronounce it. So this is a topic that can be a little confusing, but we're going to work it out and see how it goes. When we talk about sequela, it can be a little confusing because it's a term we aren't really used to. Doctors and physicians don't use it in their op notes, but I want to give you information to help you translate and understand what a sequela is and how we code it. So a sequela, essentially, you can translate into caused by. So whenever you are looking in the code book, or you are doing practice questions where they say sequela of whatever, take out sequela and put in caused by. Also, you can think about sequela of a temporary cause and a long-term effect. Now what I mean by that. A temporary cause as in the person has some condition, some ailment, in the past, which has been treated and is no longer present, but that temporary cause caused them to develop a long-term effect or a condition that is going to be with them for the long term, for the rest of their life, AKA chronic. So they have this condition, it causes something that is long-term and that condition is treated and goes away. But this long-term condition, the habit for life, yes, they might get treatment for it, but they're still going to be diagnosed with it. It's still going to be there. It's not going to go away. So that is kind of what sequela in general is and how you can translate it to understand. Throughout this video, I'm going to try my best to use the terms temporary cause and long-term effect and if I do say sequela, I'll try to say caused by so we can understand and make that connection between sequela and caused by. So hopefully I can keep these terms clear and consistent throughout the video, but I will make notations when I'm editing just in case. But know that when I say sequela, I mean caused by and also temporary cause and long-term effect to describe sequela as well. The very first thing you need to do to code a sequela is you need to pinpoint it in the op report, the clinic visit, the office note, etc. and find the terms that indicate this is a sequela. So you will see due to the late effect of or late effect of, residual condition, those are the phrases that you'll see that will let you know we're talking about a sequela. So when we go and find the diagnosis codes, we need to be looking for sequela. So once you've found that, you can now parse out the full diagnosis as what they currently have, what occasioned the visit, and that this is the long-term effect, but also what caused it that happened in the past that was a temporary cause, something they had, it's treated, it's no longer present. So then you can figure out which is which because we know that this is a sequela situation. <laughs> The first thing you want to do is go into the index and search for your long-term effect or the condition that they currently have that occasion the visit. And once you find that code, it will direct you to the correct chapter within the tabular list to confirm that yes, that is the correct code. Then you want to go back into the index and search for sequela and find your subterm, which will be your temporary cause or the condition that they had in the past that they no longer have right now. From there you will get instructions on the sequencing. More often than not, I'm going to say when we're talking about these general sequela situations, like 90% of the time, 
your current condition, what is ailing them at the present, what occasion the visit is going to come first. So our long-term effect will come first. And our second code will be our sequela code, aka caused by temporary cause. So caused by whatever happened in the past that they no longer have. And you can essentially read the codes when they're in sequence as your first code, this current condition, second code, caused by, aka sequela, condition. So you can read it as a sentence, just like you'd see it in the op note. And I will go through that when we do our example, and I'll have my notations on the screen so you can kind of see it. And maybe it's a more linear explanation or description to help you code a sequela. Also, another key thing to remember, and so far I haven't seen this in any of my practice questions, but they do make a note of it that the temporary cause and long-term effect can happen at the same time. There isn't a strict guideline of time has to pass in between the temporary cause and the long-term effect. So it can happen overlapping at the same time, but the doctor knows they have this temporary cause, they have this diagnosis, they're presenting with these other symptoms and this other diagnosis, and I know that this is a cause and effect situation. We can treat this temporary cause, but they're going to be chronically affected or affected long term by these other symptoms, this other condition. Hopefully that makes sense. But just know, it, I feel like it doesn't really happen that often. Usually there's time in between. But just note that in the general sequela situations, they can happen at the same time, and that is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. There's no guideline that there has to be a specific amount of time in between the two. So let's go through an example, and I'll go through the steps of coding it. We're not going to go into the code book, but I'll at least describe what you're going to see, what words they're going to use, and the steps of assigning those codes. So you're reading a clinic note and the diagnosis is stated as mild protein calorie malnutrition due to the late effect of rickets. So we have what is currently ailing them which is the mild protein calorie malnutrition. That's what they're currently in for, that's what they're currently presenting with, and they're going to have that for the rest of their life or for a very long time. That is what they have. But the doctor knows that it was caused by rickets that they had in the past. They no longer have rickets, but when they did have rickets, they developed this protein calorie malnutrition. So they use the term late effect, and that should be your indicator that we are in a sequela situation. The first step is finding your code for the mild protein calorie malnutrition. So in the index you will search for malnutrition and then further down you will find your protein calorie and that will then take you to the E chapter where you can confirm that you do have the correct code. Then go back into the index and search for sequela and find your subterm of rickets and that will also take you to the E chapter. And when you go to the E chapter with the code they gave you, you will find the sequela section and it will say sequela of blah blah blah, sequela of blah blah blah, sequela of rickets. Now, when you see sequela of rickets, that means and should be translated in your head to caused by rickets. So our sequela code is caused by something. That's what it should mean to you. So we know that the sequela code caused by rickets is the code that we need to look at and we need to assign. 
but there will be a note that tells you you need to code first the condition they presently have. What occasion the visit, what they're currently being treated for, and what they are diagnosed with right now. And that malnutrition code is what will come first, because that is what they currently have. That's what occasion the visit. And then the second code will be your sequela code. Sequela of rickets, aka caused by rickets. So with those two codes in that sequence, you can read it as a sentence, as in mild protein calorie malnutrition caused by rickets. Now let's move away from the general sequela situations. And when we get into the infections and parasitic diseases, sequela is a little bit different. Just a little bit. Everything that I said before is the same, except the infection or parasitic disease cannot be occurring at the same time as the long-term effect. They cannot happen at the same time. So how you find this out is if the lab work, blood work, etc. has the infection or parasite in it at the time of the present visit, you cannot have a sequela code with it, as in caused by. You can't have those two codes together. There has to be space in between having the parasite or the infection and the long-term effect diagnosis. They have to be separate. There has to be time in between the two. So you have to know that in the past, they had this infection or this parasite. It was found in the blood work. They treated it. It is no longer there, but it caused this long-term effect, this condition that they presently have right now that occasioned the visit. There has to be space in between. They cannot overlap like in the general sequela situation. That's the only thing that differs between the two. So hopefully the general sequela situation and the infectious disease, parasitic disease, sequela situations, hopefully those two make sense. If you have any questions or if I wasn't quite clear on anything, post them in the comments below and I will try my best to explain it in a different way or find other information that can help explain things that weren't clear. And keep in mind that I am using the 2017 diagnosis code book. I do not know if the 2018 fiscal year updates affected the sequela guidelines or how they describe sequela, how they're coded, I'm not sure. But hopefully this video at least gave a clearer explanation of what sequela means. So even if they did change the guidelines, at least sequela will make a little bit more sense. And also in the comments, if the 2018 updates did affect sequela in any way, let me know. And then I can figure out what those updates mean as far as how to code and how to describe sequela. Also, subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already, so you can get notifications on all the videos that I post so you're always in the know. And also like this video if you like the topic and how I explain sequela. And I'll see y'all later. Bye!